Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I have another Watch Me Work video. And in this video, I'll be showing you how to do this beautiful rose quartz look with little holographic accents. It's just so much detail and I'll show you how to layer. This set is done completely with Builder Gel, aka Hard Gel, um, all from Light Elegance. But we'll get into the details a little later in the video. And you can just see how the little holographic accents just kind of set it off. I think it's so beautiful, but that's just me. <laughs> so, so I am doing a full set. She hasn't been here in a few months. So you see the epinicium or the skin has grown down some. So I'm using the skiver bit from Atwood Industries. And that's kind of helping me push back the skin. You can use a cuticle pusher 100%. I just usually choose not to and use my um, e-file to do all the work so i'm removing the dead skin off the nail plate which is the cuticle and i'm going over the entirety of the nail plate with this diamond bit to remove shine and add texture to the nail next i'm going with a round bit and i'm removing a lot of that dead skin that i pushed up and kind of lifted up when i was using the skiver bit um, i use this bit primarily on the actual skin and not the nail plate as not to cause rings. Next, I'm going in with some nippers. Now, I mentioned I generally don't use nippers, but she had so much dead skin that was growing on the nail plate that I felt the need to clip it or it's just gonna sit there and hang and get just drier and more crusty and dusty. So I wanted to remove it. That was 100% dead skin. There's no epinicium nothing live there's no tenderness that this causes no um open wound or anything completely dead can't feel a thing so i use the skiver bit i mean the round bit to smooth out the skin and then i felt like oh i need to clip a little more because it's not really smoothing out how i want it like i said she hasn't been in a while and she tends to get pretty dry um skin towards the cuticle area so i just like to take some extra time and really get it nice and clean looking of course it is going to take some you know consistent moisturization to kind of help you know maintain the work that we're doing a lot of clients are you know kind of bad with that but you know i'm i'm doing my part <laughs> it's always the client's part to maintain you know, proper cuticle oil application. Make sure with cuticle oil, you don't use anything with petroleum or mineral oil because that can cause lifting. So make sure you read your label or you tell your clients to read the label. So I'm just going back with this round bit and I'm going from right to left and left to right. I'm taking my e-file and I'm putting in reverse and forward and just going in different directions so I can flake off that skin different ways and kind of work on it i don't want to work on this to the point i'm making the skin raw or causing any discomfort i can tell and feel that i'm still working on dead skin or skin that is kind of you know callous and and not really causing any tenderness there's not any redness that's happening um you know check in with your client to make sure there's no sensitivity because they can tell you best. But I can just kind of tell because of the texture of the skin that I'm still like buffing and working on rough, dry, and dead skin. So I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And this also helps with the overall look, our finished result. I've pushed back that skin that, grown up, that has grown on the nail plate so much so we get a nice, beautiful shape fully prepped you can see how clean it is like i said there still needs some more needs to be some moisturization in the future some maintenance but we have a pretty good slate so i'll be using some stiletto tips and you can find these tips on like ebay amazon you want to make sure that abs plastic nail supply supply glamour is a local distributor and they have stiletto tips they also have an online store so i'll try to be make sure i put a link below to their store specifically um, these type of tips so you can see i'm using a tip cutter and i ask my client the length she prefers and i generally start with like either the pinky or the pointer then i balance all the other nails usually um just a general tip because 
middle fingers are wider, they can tend to look more stubby if you make them the same exact length as everything else. So I usually make my middle fingers a little bit longer so it kind of balances out with the wideness that they usually have going on. And I just use some, some regular nail glue to glue these on. Nothing special. You can use some KDS, some just whatever you think is a is a good, reputable glue. I don't have any preferences. So I just went in with a little scissor that I have, and I clipped the sides. Because we're doing stiletto, there's just so much that the hand file down, and I probably could have clipped some more because you can see I'm kind of hand filing for a minute, and this is sped up. And, oh, I just want to add, because I didn't before, all the cuticle work I did with the round bit and the skiver bit, that was done in real time. So if you want to go back and rewatch that and kind of have it in your mind that that is in actual time, it is just one finger because I did so much work on it and so much clipping and buffing and just going slowly with making that skin look, look nice and very manicured. I just, you know, showed y'all the one finger. It was the best you know I could capture on camera and probably I wouldn't even say it was the worst of her fingers but it was a good one to show you guys so just you know don't don't be afraid to rewind and rewatch and you know learn from that and I left it in real time because people asked I couldn't do all the nails all in real time that's just one whole video maybe I'll do that in the future leave a comment below so I filed it, the nails I shaped the nails I blended the tip in because we're going to be doing kind of a sheer look. I didn't want that to show or get in the way. Dusted the nails off with some alcohol. I'm just showing you the products we're going to be using today. We're going to be using the clear rubber base as our base coat um, for the adhesion of the nails so we don't get any lifting. I'll be using the cool gel in clear to encapsulate everything. The cosmetic pink builder is going to add our our pink tone and for our layering the presto bambina art liner this is a gel paint but that has a liner or striper brush um, and next we are going to also be using the color club french tip white polish this is a regular old polish it's what i use for a lot of my marbles that have anything to do with white i even use it in black and i'm also using a natural pink cool gel it's a sheer pink this is Angel Glitter from Wildflowers, Nail, Wildflowers Nails, and some people call that color like a clear holographic. And I'm also going to be using this holographic foil. Now, I believe I got this from eBay or Amazon. Definitely going to try to put a link below because I know you guys are going to want to know what that is. And this is like a more opalescent, um, iridescent-y foil. I think I got them together. So I use both in this set. The holographic one is the one that stands out. And also I'm using this alpha brush, number four. Alpha brushes are some of my favorite, most affordable gel brushes. Of course, you can get some locally like Michael's, Hobby Lobby, just regular paint brushes. But alpha brush, they have good prices. And I like, I prefer the number six because it's a little bigger, but the number four works just fine. This client does have smaller nail beds, so number four worked and you'll see it later in the video that I do also use my um Hobby Lobby brush or the brush I got from Michaels y'all see me use it in a few videos um to do the encapsulation I believe but I think for all the other stuff I use the alpha brush and the link for that should also be in the description bar so I'm just applying the rubber base. I, I cleanse the nail with acetone first. I just quickly wipe them down just to dehydrate the nail plate, make sure it's um, sanitized and ready to go. And then I'm applying this rubber base, just polishing it on the entirety of the nail bed and even the actual tip. And then we're gonna cure in the light for the recommended time, I believe 30 seconds LED. So next, I'm applying that opalescent, like iridescent foil paper straight over that base because it does kind of have a little bit of tackiness. Now, this was to add like some dimension to the look. And if you're looking at these close on, especially to the naked eye, you can't really capture it much on camera, especially in the final look. You can see this, but I wish I would have did this one layer up because now I'm going to go in with our um, cover pink builder gel 
and go over what I did. Now you can see it, it's, it has a cool effect right there. Hopefully you can kind of see it. Again, this is something that actually looked better to the naked eye, unfortunately. So I wish I would have put it on top of this layer just to bring it up a layer. Um, but it, it did add some interesting detail. I don't regret it or anything like that. But, you know, with this whole look, I just want you to consider that you can bring some stuff forward, push some stuff back, depending on which layer you add them to or how deep in the nail you put it. And you can add more layers than I do. So I'm going in with the um, gel liner brush, um, the Presto Bambino white gel liner. And I'm just adding some, some random lines. You can see I'm pushing them out and spreading them out with that alpha brush. I'm just adding them just randomly, haphazardly. You want to make sure you, you're you not too strict with your lines. You're not too geometric. You're not too balanced. It just is very kind of free-flowing. I always recommend if you're doing something, you know, anything that's like natural or found in nature, pull up a picture and see how it actually looks. Look pull up an actual piece of rose quartz and see what makes it defines how it looks what makes it look the way it does and try to mimic those things so I'm just adding different type of lines some of them I'm splitting off some of them I'm kind of fanning out the white a little more just to add more like depth of whiteness and just make each nail unique and have its own character so after I do that I go ahead and cure in the light, of course, because this is a gel. And then you can see I'm kind of splattering a little white here and there. So after I cure it, I go ahead and apply another layer of the cover pink. And I'm just kind of polishing it on. I'm not building it up any. Just to add a layer of that pink and kind of push that white back in the nail to make it look deeper inset into the nail. So, um, like I said, just very simple. You can build up a pink in, like, some areas just to build up the actual color of pink to make it look more opaque, just to add that kind of, you know, difference in the nail. So, next I'm going to be taking some acetone, and I'm just using a brush that I have. I use it, like, for a lot of my marbles. It's just a brush I actually got in nail school that came in the kit, and it's just stuck around. And I'm applying this polish just, again, randomly. But I'm kind of crossing the lines that I previously put. So you can see those previous lines were going diagonally from left to right. And then I'm using this polish and I'm going kind of from right, top right to bottom left. Kind of, you know, crisscrossing it. But again, you don't want to make it look too structured. You don't want to make it look like a hashtag or anything. Like very like straight lines. You want it to be very organic and just kind of free flowing. But also, you do want to add some contrast and some uniqueness to the nails. And you can build up like some white in other areas and just kind of just kind of play with it. Leave some areas, you know, just kind of empty and build up a little bit of pink. Just play with it. And I can't stress it enough. Make each nail unique. And don't forget to, if you're not familiar with like a rose quartz, pull up a picture and that will definitely help you. Now, again, I do add glitter in this, and I could have put it in the layer before. I could put it in the layer now. Just, again, play around with this. It's not very strict. It's just the layering that's going to give you, like, a beautiful effect. So next, I'm taking that holographic, that clear holographic foil, um, and I'm just pressing it onto the nail. We have some tackiness left from, you know, using our builder. Um, I haven't done anything. I just spread out, you know, the polish with the white. And I'm going in and adding that foil where I see fit. And I want to add it everywhere. Just enough, you know, just to add some uniqueness, something to intrigue and catch the eye. So now I'm going in with our Cool Gel Natural Pink. The reason I'm using this is because it is a sheer pink. So again, it's pushing back and adding layers, but it's not as opaque as the cover pink. So we're not hiding a lot of the white that we just added. So it's still going to be a brighter white, but it is going to be pushed back. And it doesn't take away any of like the holographic nature of our foil by using that sheer pink either. If anything, it adds like a little more uniqueness, kind of makes it look 
pearlized on top of being holographic, if you'll kind of notice that. So next, I'm just adding a little bit of that angel glitter. Again, it's kind of like a clear holographic. You, it will reflect like the whole rainbow, the whole spectrum of colors. So I'm just adding that just not everywhere, just a little touch, just boop, 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 boop. That's it right there, boop, boop. Okay, that's it, boop, boop. <laughs> so um, after that, I'm going in with my clear cool gel. When it's all said and done, we need to encapsulate this design to protect it. So you can see I added a slip layer first, just like a regular polishing motion. And I take a bigger bead of gel and float it on. And it just self-levels beautifully. And you'll see me do that again. A slip layer. And this layer is just to tell the gel, hey, this is the guidelines of where we need to go. It's where it self-levels out into. It's like a drop of water into like a bowl. It just flows out into everywhere. Putting on the slip layer is like, hey, this is my bowl. This is where all the water exists. This is where all the gel exists. Now, once we drop our bigger bead, it knows where to disperse out to. So hopefully that's another analogy that kind of resonates with you on how to think of a slip layer and applying your gel. Gel is so easy to use, guys. If you're scared of it, don't be. Try it. I promise you'll you'll like it. It just it does a lot of the work for you. So I off camera, I shape my client's nails. I know, I'm sorry. I do it off camera. It's easier for me. And um I'm I used a fine carbide bit because I generally don't with builder gel. I just use my cross cut bit which you see me using now. In the clip before, I was using a fine carbide bit to kind of debulk because she did have her hand turned in the light. So the gel did kind of run to one side on a couple fingers. So I just use that to debulk. Generally speaking, I just use a cross cut bit, which is like a diamond bit. If you're not familiar, diamond bits are basically like sanding bands or like sanding paper. They're just texture. They don't have teeth that eat up the, the product, the um, you know, flutes that kind of flake it and lift it off. We're not doing that. We're just like buffing out the product, smoothing it out. It's a gel. It self-levels so easily. There's not big old lumps and bumps. But like I said, sometimes it can run and you have a buildup on one side. So after all that's said and done, we are, I dusted off the nail and we're ready to top coat. You can add any more details, crystals, stones, anything that you want to, but we're leaving it simple because it's just so beautiful and I thought that's that's all we needed. So I use the Young Nails Protein Bond. And that just helps my top coat not to pull away from the cuticle area. And that also helps fill in any of that texture caused by the cross cut bit, any ridges. Um, so you don't kind of see that showing through. And I'm just top coating. That's it. And I just like to turn the lights out so you can guys see that reveal of just all that depth. It just looks like rose quartz so much to me. Um, I really do love this set, even though I did it. I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. I just really love how simple and beautiful this set is. And it looks like it would be very difficult, and I promise you guys it's not. Just experiment with your layering, what you want where, when you want to add, you know, opaque pink, sheer pink. Just, Just play around. And just use those principles of finding you, you know, a good picture, actual piece of rose quartz that you can try to mimic and go off So of I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to thumbs up. Also subscribe if you're watching this video. Why not? You made it this far. We're friends now. Subscribe. <laughs> so I really appreciate you guys watching. I appreciate your, your kind words always. I feel like I don't say thank you enough. I just... It just amazes me how kind people can be. Um, some people can be nasty, but we'll flow on past that. And don't forget to comment. I try to answer questions. Or if you want to help each other out in the comments, that's fine too. You guys, let's have a little community, a, a forum, and you know, feel free to speak and ask questions. All right, you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye.